Hello everyone, today we're going to be building a brand new vampire crab paludarium. So this one here is a 60cm by 30cm by 30cm tank. I'll leave the imperial measurements up on the screen here. Um, we've already got a black background on and a cheap light. I've got a different light I'm going to be using for this uh, at the end, but this is just uh, for the build process. So don't worry about that too much, though I'll leave a link in the description as usual. Apart from that, we've got the tank on a nice aquarium leveling mat, and inside the tank we have a small piece of black plastic. Uh, this is reusable stuff. Um, I believe it's called core flute. This is just to protect the glass from any scratches and cracking if I drop any of the rocks I'm going to be using for the hardscape. So we're going to be building our little barrier here so it's going to be a wall across the front and it's going to separate our land section from the water section. So I'm doing a rather small water section here. Remember for vampire crabs you only need about 20% of the enclosure for water. So 80% land, 20% water. We're going to be building a water underlay style here so this one will be based on a clay ball substrate with our land section on top so you'll see what I mean shortly. The other alternative if you're going to build a tank is to have a completely separated barrier. I've done a video on that in the past but I do find this method that we're going to use today a lot better. It's just a lot easier for maintenance and easier to keep warm in winter if you need to use a heater constantly. So we'll just continue with my little wall build here so just do this however you like. This always takes a while to do so I'll just fast forward through my little process here I do change it quite a lot if you're not 100% happy with it just wait a day and come back to it you'll usually see what you don't like and you can change it nice and easily okay so now that we have our little water barrier in place we can start adding our clay balls so these are really easy really cheap to find so just pour them into the back section where you're going to have your land then level it out just remember you want to keep your soil about half an inch to an inch above the water just so it doesn't become waterlogged so remember that when you're putting in your substrate at the back here with the clay balls you want to go a little bit higher just so that the water doesn't uh, become waterlogged in the soil clay balls are really good too because they add a good place for beneficial bacteria to live which will end up being what keeps your water section nice and clean and free from any of the ammonia nitrates and nitrates so that there is what we're going to be using you can see here, nice bit of height, and that will allow us to keep our soil out of the water section. Okay, the next most important thing to add here is the barrier that keeps the soil out of the clay balls. So I usually like to use weed matting. Uh, you can find this just about anywhere. Any garden store sells it, it's super cheap. So just place that down at the top. You can hide the front edges a little bit with the rock so you can't see it. Give it a bit more of a nice impression. This stuff's reusable as well, so you can use it plenty of times. If you decide to redo the tank, you can just use it again. You can also use window screen or some sort of a mesh, but I find this stuff here keeps the majority of the soil out and you don't have any issues with it leaking through and polluting the water section. You're obviously going to get a little bit of stuff go through but no actual particles that are going to stay in the water and continuously release uh, nutrients. Once you've got that out of the way you can start adding your soil. For this I generally like to use just organic soil, any type's fine and I usually mix it with a bit of cocoa fiber. You don't have to do this but I like to just give it a bit of a mix. Just plain simple soil's fine as long as you don't have any fertilizers or anything in the soil. So that's nice and straightforward as well so just build up a little bit of a base. Remember if you're planting into it you're going to need a bit of depth for your plants. This build we're doing a bit of a different style so I'm not going that deep this time. An inch to half an inch is all we're going to need. The crabs will still have plenty of soil to burrow in, which is where they primarily live. We're going to be accommodating their needs for that. Okay, so that is our soil section in, nice and easy. As you can see, we didn't go all that deep. Some sections are a bit deeper than others. Uh, along the front here, it's quite shallow, but it doesn't really matter too much. Now we're moving on to hardscape. Again, you can use whatever you like. We're doing a fantasy style build here. So I'm using a nice piece of birch wood. I just found this in the forest. Uh, it took me a long time to find. Um, it's got lots of good character. I do like the look of it. You'll see it a little bit better later on once the lighting gets a little bit better. But the birch wood has a nice texture. It's safe to use, unlike a lot of pine. If you want to build something, avoid any of the pine species. They're not the best to use. They seem to go moldy really quick. Plus the pine resin and the sap isn't very good for your tank. So definitely avoid those altogether. Okay, so our hardscape here is going to be nice and simple. One big piece of birch wood, as you can see. Bit of a mutated piece. 
Got strange branches coming out of it. Definitely got a lot of character. We'll cover the saw cuts up later on so they don't look so silly. Okay, so this is a nice simple piece of hardscape so I don't have to do anything dramatic. We're not creating anything crazy with this. One piece solves the problem. However, if you're going to do something a little bit more intricate, take your time with it. Definitely do it over a couple of days. Don't try to rush it all in one day because you will change your mind during the process. Next we're going to add some detail stones, this just gives a few more places for the crabs to burrow under, so definitely uh, add them where possible. I've added them to some of the places where it's a little bit deeper, so they'll just dig a little burrow underneath and make themselves a little cave. They'll also do the same all along the underside of this piece of birch wood here, so this sits on top of the soil and they will just dig around and burrow all through that, so don't worry about where they're going to have places to hide, they'll find plenty of space. Okay, so as I said earlier, we're not going to be planting this tank too heavily. We're going for a different style here completely. There is a reason for this. I know a lot of the time we do heavily planted tanks for these crabs to give them a lot of shelter and places to hide. However, I've been watching my main tank here for quite a while now and while the plants definitely are necessary, there are some other ways to provide them any sort of cover and places to hide. So in my other tank I have a lot of moss and I've noticed one of the primary places they like to hide is between the moss and the soil. So once we place the moss down, there's always going to be a little bit of space underneath and the crabs will dig their way underneath and they will hide underneath this moss layer and between the soil. So this is a really good way to essentially make the entire tank a place for them to hide so we're going to go ahead and add our moss across the entire soil layer of the tank and this is how we're going to get away with not using any leaf cover any plants or anything else so the good part about this is as well that the crabs eat moss it's one of their favorite things to eat so as the moss grows they will just chew on it like cows they are pretty big grazers so this is the other benefit the only thing we need to be careful of here is moss doesn't like to be too wet so this is where our soil being higher than the water layer comes very important so if you are using plants it's not as important but with moss you definitely need to make sure that the soil isn't waterlogged okay so we're going to go ahead and add moss to the entire base of this moss i'm using at the moment is harvested from a little patch not too far from my house i've got one log there that i leave basically easy to access and it's just covered in moss and i just raid it as it grows back so it's quite a nice sustainable source you can keep this stuff wherever in your house if you want to grow your own moss but for me that's where i'm doing it at the moment it grows really quickly and it's easy to harvest Okay, now that we've got all our base moss in covering the entire surface of the tank and a couple of little patches on the wood, we're going to add some different kinds of moss here to give a bit more of a fantasy style look. So the first thing you need to do for this is to get some cotton. This is just some organic cotton here. You can use anything, but I find cotton's cheap, easy, and it degrades at a sort of a slow enough rate but it still does degrade unlike fishing line. So we're just gonna tie this on and then we're going to add our moss. I'm not 100% sure what type of moss this is, though it's a different stuff uh, to what we used on the base. Uh, it's more of a climbing moss. You generally find this stuff on tree trunks, which is why we're going to be using it for these branches. So if you've applied moss to anything in an aquarium, we're using the same process. So we'll just lay it on and then wrap it on with the cotton. So pretty straightforward. We're gonna do this quite a few times to a few different sections. And over time, the moss will take hold and it will start to spread. So that's the aim for this one. The only thing we're gonna possibly have issues with here is uh, it gets quite high and quite close to the light. So we're gonna need a lot of misting and moisture. So depending on how this works out, you can also add a layer of fabric here. This will keep the moisture in a little bit better but that will depend on your current situation so for now we're just going straight onto the wood you do have problems with it drying out you can add some uh, special fabric down that will allow you to keep the moisture in there 
Now that the moss is all sorted, we can add our substrate for the water section. So for this, I'm using just plain white sand. Uh, it's recycled from my last aquarium build, so there is a little bit of gravel in there. I'm going to dig all that out at some stage. So we're going to put a nice little layer in here. You can use whatever you like. Sand or fine gravel works best. Try to avoid big rocks if you can. It just gives the crabs a bit of an easier time when they're molting. And they always molt in the water, so just be aware of that as well. So you do need some sort of hiding places. As you can see, we've got a little cave here on the left. And we'll add some more details to the water section once we've got it established. But for now, we're just going to put the sand in, spread it all around, and then we can add water. So I'm just using tap water here with the chlorinator in it. I've got quite a high pH and hardness, so I don't need to remineralize the water or anything. If you do have problems with low minerals in your water or if the pH is low, so if it's a little bit acidic, you're gonna need to account for that. I've got another video uh, for water quality and stuff. I'll link that in the description as well. So if you want to know the exact water parameters to keep your crabs at, check that one out. But if you've kept shrimp, basically keep your crabs around the same level. So that's neocaridina, not caridina shrimp. So that's our water level. We're keeping it just below the clay balls. This will allow the water to drain through the tank, straight down through the substrate and stay separate from the soil. So the soil won't be waterlogged. Hey, perfect. That is the core of our tank done. So moving on to the next part of the build, I'm going to be adding these awesome little crab cribs from Chris at Symbiotic Glass. He sent these over a while ago. He's been making scientific instruments like viscometers and spectrometers for the last 15 or so years. And he also started making some interesting stuff for his fish. First, he started off making a little home, kind of like this little crab hovel here for his scalabatis. But he ended up finding out that his quarries and his autosynclus loved it more and they basically made his scalabatis homeless. So after hearing that, I thought I'd get a couple of these and see how my vampire crabs like them. You'll see a little bit later in the video, they find really weird ways to use them. So these ones here are a custom order. I chose the color and everything and they also glow in the dark which is super cool and they also come up really cool under UV light so if you get a black light or a UV light they look really cool I haven't been able to find one that'll work for my tank yet but it's definitely something on my list I'll leave a link in the description to his store and you can check out what he's got on offer and we'll just start putting these bad boys straight into the tank. So I've got a few different things here. So we've got some mushrooms. These are mostly just a decoration thing. I wanted to sort of get a fantasy style forest vibe going here. Just got to wait for the tank to grow in. And as well as that, we got these sweet little crab cribs. I've had these in the tank for a while now, even though you're just seeing it now, but the crabs really do like them. Some of them live in them. Some of them seem to be using them as feasting halls or dining halls, maybe even traps. I haven't quite figured it out yet. They're definitely cool little additions. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add everything to the tank. Then we can start adding our crabs.
now been 106 days since I first set up this paludarium and you'll already notice quite a lot has changed. The first thing I changed in this build was the light and the lid. So the light and the lid I originally had on this tank were part of a set and they come with this aquarium. But I noticed this meant that the moss was drying out really quickly and I couldn't keep up the spraying enough to keep the moss alive. So I just switched over to a clear plastic lid, just an acrylic one, drilled some air holes in it and then changed the light. The light now sits a lot higher. You'll see it here, it's attached to the shelf above and this gives a lot better light spread and it doesn't put so much heat into the tank which is drying the moss out. The crabs didn't really mind. They quite like a hot warm environment with a lot of humidity but the moss at the top of the tank was really struggling. Some of it's still coming back at the moment, which you might notice it's a little bit brown. The other major addition that I added to this tank was some ferns. So basically, I kind of got bored of the moss only scape. The crabs didn't mind too much, but I wanted some plants in here. So I just built the back section up behind the birch wood and I added some ferns. The other thing too was a lot of the crabs were spending quite a lot of time on the back side of the wood and because I didn't build it up I had to spend a lot of time looking up and over in behind there so that was a bit of under planning on my part. I should have built that up and then put the moss on top of that. Probably would have made a better situation. It is what it is and I do like the ferns in there now so let me know what you think. As well as those couple of changes we've already had two awesome batches of baby red devil vampire crabs in this tank. There's tons of little babies here. I've almost lost count at how many. We've spent most of their time lurking in the moss. Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to put these crabs, so I can't separate them. So they're going to be living in this tank by themselves. So natural selection is going to be the ruling factor on whether they survive or not. I think they'll do okay. They've got plenty of hiding places and crevices in the rocks. The addition of the aquatic moss is making a huge difference as well. So I think that's going to be really beneficial for them. If you do plan to keep babies alive, this is definitely something I highly recommend. The same for the shoreline as well. Have a lot of moss near the shoreline because they do move move between the aquatic moss and the terrestrial moss quite a lot so that's just something to be aware of if you do have baby crabs. Outside of those few changes not much else has taken place but I do want to add something really interesting with the glass hovels. The crabs didn't really interact with the mushroom so much which is obvious they were more of a cosmetic sort of a theme which I quite like but the little glass hovels or the crab cribs have been really interesting because depending on their placement crabs interact with them really differently so the two at the front of the tank they're kind of like dining halls or feasting areas and the crabs drag whatever they want to eat into these things and just munch away in there. Quite often I'll find chewed up snails, snail shell, salvinia, bits of old crab malt lying in the bottom of them. And I've even seen one crab ambush an isopod that's ventured into one of the cribs to eat some of the scraps lying around. So that was pretty cool. If the crabs possessed any sort of intelligence rather than instinct, I would almost think that this was some sort of a trap, like an ambush. Because I do see quite a lot of isopod shells and scraps lying inside the two front hovels so it is possible that the crabs are actually learning to wait for the isopods to go in there and then ambush them and eat them. It's hard to say though but it has been pretty interesting to watch. The other crab cribs that I have at the back of the tank they seem to be the ones they're using for homes so yeah depending on the placement they're using them quite differently. The only one I noticed that they haven't actually been using is the one at the top of the tank on the right. I think this placement is a bit high and because it's made out of glass a little bit of light gets through so being high and getting a lot of light they probably don't feel as comfortable as they usually do. So the other ones that are down to the ground and placed more discreetly seem to be the ones that they like to live inside. Anyway I'm pretty sure that covers everything. I just want to give Chris from Symbiotic Glass a shout out for sending me the crab cribs and the mushrooms. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in another video. Cheers, everyone.